and welcome to my February reading wrap up. Um, small month this one. <laughs> it did get like 10 books read, but as you can see, only three books for my physical TBR, which I kind of like to be my main project. So I was a little bit disappointed with my February reading, but I did start a new job. So it's kind of understandable. And also I spent most of the month reading this massive thing. <laughs> so again, could have done a little more had I not got so stuck in that, but I, it was okay. Um, I'm trying to be kind to myself. Um, so I'm gonna get into everything that I read in February. The first book that I read was Black Box by Shiori Ito, which is a Japanese memoir of a woman who was raped and basically her dealings with the justice system and what they did for her or, you know, more accurately, what they didn't do for her. I gave this four stars. It was wonderful. I have a full review if you want to go watch that. But in summation, it's basically just about her experience and what she went through and like she eventually went to she eventually went to the media to tell her story. I mean, she was part of the media, but she went to the media to tell her story because the police, the judges, the justice system weren't doing anything and were so detrimental to her case and to what she needed. And a lot of this book does read almost like a police investigation because she had to put so much of this evidence together herself because the police did nothing basically except get in the way because the man who raped her was very powerful and well known and famous and they did nothing for her so she did it all herself and this book is what she went through what she did after the fact her explaining her every move like she was so defensive it was so painful to read because like that sort of defensiveness doesn't just like come from nothing you know like you could see the way she's been judged and how that's changed the way she talks about what happened and the way she experiences her life and it, it was very very touching and a wonderful read i would highly recommend didn't love the writing style so much it was a little bit like stilted and weird and i don't know if that was like her writing style or had to do with the translation but this was a very wonderful four star read that i would highly recommend then I read Stamped from the Beginning, The Definitive History of Racist Ideas in America by Abram X. Kendi, which I gave four stars. I listened to this via audiobook, and this is essentially a history of racism in the United States, like starting from the 1500s coming up through present day. Like, it, it covered a lot in like, what I think was only like five or 600 pages. Um, it did a really great job. I gave it four stars. Like I said, um, my biggest issue with this was how dense it was and consuming it via audiobook I don't think always worked for me, especially because I was listening to this when I was on a road trip. So I'd listen to it for like five or six hours straight, which is a lot. Like that's a lot of time to be listening to an audiobook like that. So I definitely just didn't absorb it. And pay attention the way I really really needed to so this is one I would like to give a reread at some point in the future because I do think it might be a five star if I just like reread a physical copy in another like two or three years and absorb it that way but truly this was fantastic it was so well researched it was so detailed I don't know how he managed to cram like 500 years worth of racial history into you know, what is not an incredibly long book. And he did it without the book feeling like too fast paced or feeling like he was skimming through things. Like everything felt like it got the time that it needed, you know, like everything was just so well done, so well explained. And it's like, he didn't spend tons of time on everything, but it felt like each topic, each person, each like small scenario that he discussed got enough time like it got the time that it needed and everything felt like that it flowed so smoothly and usually that's something that I have a big problem with in books like this and I didn't hear it was just like wonderfully done so well researched if you're trying to learn more about like the history of racism specifically in America but I do feel like while he focused solely on America a lot of it is like very useful for other parts of the world um I can't recommend this enough like it was really fantastic it was really wonderful like 
I don't know like I don't have enough good things to say about this and like it didn't get five stars because of me like I would really like to at some point reread it and probably give it five stars it's just like I genuinely just didn't follow enough of it like I missed out on so many things I couldn't give it the five stars but it was fantastic like I would highly recommend I do want to read more from him because I know he's written other things I'm giving it a minute um I read most of this in January when I went on that road trip but just I highly recommend uh, he covered so much like it's told largely he focuses on like five different people five different chapters he starts with Cotton Mather goes to Thomas Jefferson and then ends with Angela Davis and like it, technically it's kind of a lot more detail about them than like other people in the book but also like not really like he kind of covers a lot more than just them in their chapters it's more of like they just happen to be during those correct time periods to like make it all the way to present day but it was wonderful go read this it, I don't know it's such a worthwhile read then I read The Girl with Stars in Her Eyes by Zio Axelrod this is an adult romance novel set in Philadelphia centered around the music scene between like Philadelphia and New York. The main character is a struggling musician. She does a lot of session music and she kind of wants to get into the production side of things and has an offer but doesn't have like the money to buy in on that offer and then she winds up meeting a guy from her childhood who's involved with like an up-and-coming rock band that's having some issues with current members and might be looking to replace them and it kind of all goes from there um I gave this four stars that might have been a little generous it's a little hard for me to judge because like I basically read half this book put it down for a month and then read the other half but like I really enjoyed it like it was a good time I was craving romance a lot in December and I do wish I picked this up earlier on because this was much more like the vibes that I wanted like it was realistic it was down to earth you can tell that Zio Axelrod knows the music industry because she did such a good job of writing it and it felt real like they are like up and coming rock stars but it's done in like a very realistic way of like you can tell you're making it you're kind of dealing with a low level of celebrity and like you're dealing with the production company and like your label and like all the things that go along with that and it's kind of a struggle but at the same time it's like you're not like a big a-lister like having a good time with parties and fangirls and like whatever like I don't know it was just well done and it talked a lot about the music and like how they were making the music and like I don't know it was well done the romance was fine I don't know that I necessarily cared that much about the main couple like I liked both of them I liked them together I felt like they needed a little bit more to like ground them as a relationship like they did really like each other and they did have chemistry but it was the kind of thing where like their relationship just didn't work like logistically because she was living in Philly and wanted to get into the, like, the production side of music and he was living in New York like managing the band <laughs> and it was like the situation just like didn't work and I wish they'd spent more time dealing with like the realities of their relationship instead of just the feelings like I would have been a lot more invested I feel like but it was fun like I, I liked the band I liked the music and the way the girls in the band like dealt with each other and their interpersonal relationships it was a good time <laughs> like I would recommend this book I don't think it's like the most amazing thing in the world but like I had a really fun time which is largely what I want from books like this and then I read Lurkus Ending by Silas House, which I also have a full review for, so I will link that down below if you want more of my thoughts. But this is an adult dystopic novel about a young man from America who starts fleeing to Ireland because that is the last place on earth that's still accepting refugees. And he goes there with his family and by the time they get there he's on his own and they're not really accepting refugees anymore so he kind of winds up just like in an extreme survival situation like trying to survive trying to feed himself trying to just get by in this in in this very unpleasant world and so much of the book is just about like grief and hope and like what it means to be human it was a lot more about like ideas than like a concrete story i gave this four stars wonderful book um 
definitely like a little bit too much on the lofty ideas side of things for me. I like things a little bit more literal, a little bit more down to earth. Silas House has called this a meditation on grief and it's just like, it, that's kind of what it is. Like it was wonderfully done. Um, just like a little bit too much of that for my taste but it was lovely. I really liked the story. I love the world that he created and I love that this was so much of a specific character journey that you really only see the world through the main character. Like you don't get a full picture of what the world is or what's happening. You only see what the character sees and you only like understand the world through his understanding which like I feel like with a lot of dystopians it's about the society so you like are privy to a lot of the details of it and in this it's just like you're only getting like that very very limited scope and it was still so well developed that it was fantastic and it was just like the characters were great I do wish there'd been like a little bit more it was kind of a short book and I do think it could have been like a little bit longer just to like flesh out some of the things that had been introduced but it was wonderful. I highly recommend if you want to read some like adult dystopian um because it was just like I don't want to call it light because it was very dark and very sad but it was like more about the emotions of it than like a really like detailed heavy world building kind of situation which I enjoyed. It was just like I, I think he fully captured what he was trying to capture. It just wasn't like 100% the book for me but like would recommend. I think you should definitely read this. It was well worth it. And then the one book that I DNF this month, The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs, um, A New History of a Lost World by Steve Brusada. Um, I DNF this. I got more than halfway through. I was listening to the audiobook. I just, I don't know. I didn't care. I was so bored. I, I don't know. I was 55% of the way through and considering the end of audiobooks is usually like a lot of credits and like discussing the publisher or whatever, probably a little bit more than that, but I was just not paying attention. Like that's it. Like I was like, I don't know that I retained anything from this book. Like I'm sure it's fine. If you like dinosaurs, it's probably a great read. I don't care about dinosaurs at all, but I read a lot of like nonfiction via audiobook about subjects that I don't really care about because like nine times out of ten the book will make it very interesting for me and I will like gain a new appreciation for that topic. And this was just like, no, like I don't care. This makes me feel like I'm listening to a boring lecture in school by a professor who's just dull. I zoned out. Like the narrator's voice in this, his cadence just was so like lulled me into a daydream every time I started listening to him. Like, I don't know if it's just me, but like, I couldn't listen to him. Like, I just, I tried, I couldn't. Um, I'm not gonna try to read the physical book because sometimes I do that with audiobooks that I can't like pay attention to. Um, just because I don't care. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I'm sure this is fine and wonderful if you are invested, but like, it, it wasn't for me. Then I listened to another audiobook, um, The Glamour of Grammar, A Guide to the Magic and Mystery of Practical English by Roy Peter Clark. Um, I give this three stars. I got through a lot of audiobooks in February because my commute is very, very long now, so I have a lot of time every day to listen to audiobooks. I don't know what to think of this book. Um, I started off really enjoying it. Like, he has this very, like, middle-aged white dad humor which is like kind of grating but also like kind of funny and charming in its own ways like if you like that kind of thing I liked it at first and then it, it got to a point where I was just like dude just like shut up <laughs> um but like I was having fun for a while and then I just kind of stopped having fun and then he became very very grating this is a lot about like basic grammar so it reminded me of my intro to linguistics class because it's about like the basic grammar but not just like the rules themselves but like how you use them in writing and like what kind of tone they imply like the way you use the rules in order to like convey what you mean in like you know a writing sense either like nonfiction or fiction like whatever um which I found interesting it was just very basic so I'm not sure I really gained a whole lot from it I like grammar I'm a nerd like that 
I wanted to like this more but he was just so annoying by the end and like he had a whole section on pronouns especially as they relate to gender and like the issues of today and like transgender people and non-binary people which was like great especially considering this book is like 13 years old um but he didn't really handle it the best way like he was very much in favor of like singular they he was like obviously like this works <laughs> And it was funny because he actually used JK Rowling to like support that point. <laughs> Again, this book is like more than a decade old. Um, that amused me. But he also shared a passage about a transgender person um, written by their child in which he, Clark, um, dead named the transgender person. And then the article he shared misgendered them for the entire article and never gendered them correctly and it was just like why would you do that like you know there are there, even in 2010 like there were many options of like you could share because he shared passages like throughout this to kind of like illustrate the rules it was like you could show share so many passages by transgender people you know like and he even mentioned a trans author and it's like why did you feel the need to dead name someone and share an article that misgendered them. And it was just like, why? Like, I don't know. He was trying to be supportive. This book is more than a decade old. So like, I don't know. Like I would hope that he's learned since then. And he kind of implied in this that like he'd done things in the past and like has learned since then and like has grown as a person. So like, I hope he's grown in the past like 13 years and he probably has, but it's just like, I, I couldn't recommend this because that really did take a lot of joy out of it for me and like it's not fun when you're just listening to someone being dead named and misgendered and like that was a choice that he so easily could have not done and I don't know um but yeah the book like apart from that wasn't like terrible but it also just it got boring and annoying at a point and he kind of got boring and annoying at a point so I, I don't know that I would recommend this there are probably better and more interesting and more detailed books on grammar out there. And then I read, or I finished rather, My Eternal Struggle for the Month, um, A Prayer for Owen Meany by John Irvin. This took me three weeks to read, and that was three weeks of consistently reading it and reading it as my main book. I started this immediately after finishing Black Box and then took a break for like one morning to read Lark Ascending because that's all the time it took me to read Lark Ascending and this took me three weeks it was such a drag to get through um I gave this two stars this is an his a historical fiction novel about a boy who has a very strange voice and he's a very strange young boy he's very tiny and he is an instrument of God um or he believes he is but in the book it's presented as fact because the book is narrated by his friend who fully believes that he is an instrument of God and this is the reason that he believes in God and is religious so um it's it's a lot about it's about Owen Meany but narrated by his friend who I do not remember his friend's name it's probably like John or Jim or Tom or it was something generic um he didn't really matter even though he was like the main character I guess um and it's just it starts in the 50s when there are small children and goes up through the 60s and the Vietnam War and then there's a little bit during like I think the 70s or the 80s um as the friend is an adult now and kind of like reflecting back on this childhood um it's a very slow <laughs> character it's a very slow dense character study which when I say that, I feel like I should have loved this and I just didn't. I was so bored this entire time. I did not care at all. And like, I feel so bad because like, I, every time I go to describe what the book was like, I'm like, that sounds like exactly my kind of thing. And I just didn't care. Like I, I was the opposite of invested in this. I would read like 30 pages and be like, wow, congrats me and put it down. Cause I just didn't want to read anymore. It was painful. It was so boring like towards the end it got a little better and it was like i kind of like got the point of what was happening and things started to matter 
but it took so long to get to that point. Like I like slow, I like dense, I like character studies, but when you do that, I have to care about the characters and I have to be invested and I wasn't here. It took so long for me to care about the characters and like by the time I did, it was like, I've already been reading for this for two weeks. Like that ship has sailed, <laughs> like I've moved on. Um, so yeah, two stars. And then like small petty thing, Owen Meany, um, all of his dialogue was in all caps, like every single time he talked through the entire book. And sometimes he would have like paragraphs of dialogue, which was just annoying to read. Like I get why it was done. I get that it was a choice and I get that it really doesn't matter to the story, but I, I did just find it annoying to read. And like that didn't make this two stars, but it, it certainly didn't help. Um, I liked a little, a little more once it got to like, kind of the characters were developing towards the end and like by the time it got to like the politics that it was discussing it got more interesting but like I like reading about the Vietnam War like that part the final third was like pretty decent had this been like a 300 page book that I didn't spend three weeks slogging through it probably would have been three stars because it wasn't terrible. It was just that it took me so long that I wound up just hating it more. Um, and then it also had some like questionable gender things. It did not treat women very well. Um, the few female characters that existed here. Um, and I don't know how much of that was intentional because I do think the main character was kind of supposed to be sexist and how much of it was the fact that this was published in I think 89. So. I don't know. I didn't love it. I have one more John Irving book on my shelf that I'm going to try, but not anytime soon. Um, this was enough for me for a while, and this made me want to read short books, because at least when I hate a short book, it's over quickly. And then I read an ebook, The Girls in the Garden by Lisa Jewell, which is another Lisa Jewell thriller about a girl whose body is found by her younger sister outside of their like apartment complex, which has like a communal shared garden like the whole apartment complex and like all the buildings kind of open up on like this little private park and it's kind of like this very communal space and it deals with you know them and their neighbors and like the relationships they form as they live there um and then it kind of turns into like this sexual assault and like what happened to this young teenage girl and yeah i gave it three stars it was not terrible it was really fast which was kind of the saving grace of this it was a very short book but like it was just like boring like i i get the discussions that lisa jewel was trying to have but i've read several of her books and i do feel like sometimes they're a little bit too preachy like not that i disagree with her and like the points that she's trying to make it's just that they come across as like a little bit preachy in a way that kind of like supersedes the story if that's the correct word that I'm looking for like it, and it just kind of like winds up being boring and annoying and so much of this book nothing happened like you open with the younger sister finding her older sister's body like outside of their door and then you cut back in time like eight months earlier or six months whatever and half of the book is just like the six months leading up to her finding the body which like I get when thrillers do that, but I usually don't like it because it just makes me feel like I'm looking for what happened after this moment, not what happened before this moment. And it took so long to get there and I just didn't really care. And it was very, very forgettable. And I don't know, I don't really have anything else to say about this. Although I do like, this book dealt with mental illness in a thriller in a realistic way where it just like had nothing to do with like the thriller aspect of the book, which I appreciated because you don't see that a lot. Like there was a man who had schizophrenia on this and just like it had literally nothing to do with the thriller he just like it had to do with like the story but not the thriller aspects which was nice and it was kind of done in like a realistic way and i don't know i appreciated that but like overall this book was just was so forgettable and then the final book i read was code talker by joseph bruchuk a novel about the navajo marines of world war ii um, essentially what had happened in history was that during World War II, the Japanese were breaking our code and the Marines, this had been done before with other 
uh, Native Americans. But the Marines used the Navajo language as the code because their language was so complicated and difficult to learn that, like, the Japanese couldn't break it. So a lot of Navajos became Marines and became, like, what was called code talkers. Um, and this follows the story of one teenager who lies about his age to get into the military and becomes a code talker and, like, what he experienced. Um, I give this three stars. This is YA feels kind of like almost more like middle grade but like a little too dense for middle grade I don't know it was weird um the problem with this book was that Joseph Bruchak did a lot of research like tons of research and he wrote a book based on that research and he said this in the author's note I already figured it out by this point but it was nice to be confirmed he said that when he wrote the first draft there was basically no character like there was no main character there was no story it was just full of all the research he'd done and he was like that's fine i'll just like create characters in later drafts and like make it into more of a novel then i i think this needed a couple more drafts to get there because the main character of this book ned had basically no character development no personality there was no real narrative here it was just like information like a paragraph of information and then like a paragraph of more information and like it was like just full of all the research that he'd done and there was like no narrative no character no story um he should have just written non-fiction because like this got three stars because i did really enjoy all of the information like it was interesting information it was great research all of the research he did was wonderful but it, it's not a novel <laughs> like it's barely a novel like you could have replaced ned with another character with so little editing like replace the details about his life ned could have been anyone um and it's just like i don't know why he didn't just write a non-fiction book because that would have been so much more interesting than like this you know like it just felt like he included like the most generic character so he could include like as much of his research as possible to like make it into like one generic code talker as like a vehicle to share this information he found in all of his wonderful research and I, I don't know like it was just such a dry and boring way to read a novel like nonfiction is so much more engaging than this was and I I don't know I think I think he thought he got there with the character development and stuff I I don't think he had I think he needed quite a bit more and this book also had an annoying thing to happen where like they kept thinking like a lot of it was taking place in the war and the soldiers kept thinking that like their fellow marines were dead and then they would just show up a couple pages later and be fine and I don't know if that's because this was YA and he was trying to make it more like kid friendly um but it, after it happened like the third time, it's like, dude, it's war. People can die. It's fine. They don't have to keep magically showing up later being totally fine after like getting a bullet through the throat. Like it doesn't have to happen. Um, but yeah, this wasn't great. Like I'm glad I read it for the information that was in it and all the research that he did. But like as a story, this was entirely a failure to me, which was unfortunate because like it did have a lot of potential. So that was everything that I read in February. Let me know down below if you've read any of these and what your thoughts on them are, if you have. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see y'all again soon.